Life should not only be measured by what we get out of it, but also by what we do to help others. I'm William Shatner. Tonight, true stories of real heroes whose concern and confidence make a difference on Rescue 911. We begin on October 11th, 1992, as Jody Farber and a group of friends were enjoying a diving trip off the Florida Keys. Experienced divers, they were all too aware that the sea is not forgiving. This is an annual event that we come down to Marathon for, for a four-day dive trip. You're clear, Johnny. Mark James and his wife, Pat, had only been married a month. How's that? Pat's a very conservative diver. The first day, she was a little too scared because of the current. But the second day, we had no reason to believe that anything was going to be out of the usual. Pat asks my husband, Ken and I, if she could buddy with us that day. Okay, they're on here. On this 60-foot dive we were doing, Pat stayed real close to us. This reef was known for its big fish. So Ken decided on this dive that he'd rather take his pole spear with in case he could see a nice big grouper or something good for dinner. made sure that we all were okay, that we all were at a thousand pounds of air. And I was looking around to see what else there was that I could play with or what else I could take some pictures of. <laughs> Pam was signaling me that she was out of air. I just couldn't believe she was out of air because I knew she wasn't. But yet, she was in a panic. Her eyes were just as huge as saucers. So you react to that signal. When she got my regulator in her mouth, she was holding on to that with both hands. And she was making a horrible sound under the water. That, that was a scary sound to hear. I turned to see where Ken was, my husband, because I wanted him to come and assist us. And he had turned his back to us to look at something in the reef. When I turned back to look at Pat, she had passed out. That's when I really knew that this wasn't just a distressed diver. I had a diver that was dying. When we continue, I realized it was my life, and then I felt the most incredible feeling of helplessness I've ever felt in my life. While diving 60 feet below the surface in the Florida Keys, Pat James passed out, leaving her life in the hands of her friend, Jody Farber. 
the main thought in my mind at that point was just to get Pat to the surface as fast as I could without us dying or both of us getting bent. Diving instructor Randy Shell heard Jody's cries for help. Jody was panicking, not so much uh, for fear of herself, but for her buddy. I pulled her up on the boat and rolled her over on her side, and then it became very obvious that she had drowned. She was attempting to breathe, even though she was unconscious. Let's get, some help. Let's get these other people up. After several expulsions of water, she basically regained consciousness just for a minute and screamed for help. Can you get some oxygen here? Everybody! What happened? What's happening? What's going on? Pat's husband, Mark, heard the commotion and came over. I realized it was my wife. Come on, baby, push it up. She was the most awful gray color I'd ever seen anybody in my life. I was on the edge of just falling apart. And then I felt the most incredible feeling of helplessness I've ever felt in my life. The captain of the ship radioed to have paramedics meet them at the dock. Diving site, diving site, see Faring? Throughout the 40 minutes it took to get Pat back to shore, they continued to give her oxygen. Randy and everybody kept saying, oh, you did good, you did good. But my thought was, I did good, but did I bring up a vegetable? Is, was, was Pat going to be um, OK after all that? Monroe County paramedics Jurgen Nicola and Kathleen Dobbins were waiting to treat Pat. When we got on the boat, she was curled up in a ball, almost in what I would say a fetal position, and she was breathing, but you could hear that there was bubbles in her lung sounds. Let's get her on her left side. It was pretty conclusive that she had a lot of salt water in her lungs, and she wasn't um, getting enough oxygen into her bloodstream because it was filling up with water. Okay, okay, all right, Pat. So in, in a sense, she was actually almost drowning in her body fluids. Hey, Pat, how you doing, Pat? Huh? Her blood pressure was dropping and her pulse was increasing. All right, good, good flow. We got a good flow here. I'm going to tape it down. Okay. Pat, how you doing? How you feeling? feeling we were better? very concerned for her that she might not make it. Okay, I'm going to get Pat on her left side. Pat 6, okay? Fisherman's Hospital, priority one. The hospital gave us a go ahead to give Lasix, which clears up the lungs so that a patient can breathe better. So, we got it. Is it running? She's going into shock. Okay. Every paramedic's concern or outcome is to make their patient, I believe, better than when they found them. She was getting worse, she was deteriorating. A Metro Dade air rescue helicopter transported Pat to Mercy Hospital in Miami, where she was put in a hyperbaric chamber. Her husband, Mark, rejoined her there. Right off the bat, I told her I loved her and that I was glad to see she was doing well. And I told her, I said, when all this is over, we're going to sit down and have a good cry together. And we're going to get her back home just as soon as we can. Pat was released two days later without any permanent injuries. The accident had occurred when a new mouthpiece disconnected from a regulator hose and she breathed in water. I can remember the thought going through my head that I was going to die, that I was never going to see my husband again. We had only been married four weeks. I thought it wasn't fair. I felt so sad and so cheated. And now that we still have a chance to do all these things, I look, I have so much to look forward to. Mark turned to me when we were on the boat with tears just streaming down his face and said, thank you, thank you. He said, 
you were the only person that I would have wanted her to have been with when this would have happened because um, you saved her life. Every day I realize that I was incredibly lucky to have Jody with me, that I'm extremely fortunate just to be here today. Two months later, Pat went diving again. The crisis of having to go through this with someone and knowing how close to death she actually was makes me so glad and so happy that we have been given a second chance. And we both know what it takes now to, to make a good marriage after having been through a couple already for each of us. We believe we were intended to be together. Next. 337-28-1033. I'm thinking Phil would call. Find out how Channel 6 is taking action for you. Watch a full hour of 6 Action News weekdays at 4. Now, based on the true story of a preacher who seduced his followers to perform his every desire, even murder. Watch Prophet of Evil next.